The iPhone 15 may have a big problem. Apple has finally switched to USB-C and we have a new block and we have a new charger. But some people have old Android phones laying around and they have old chargers laying around for that Android phone that's also USB-C. And when you plug in this USB-C cable to your new iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, it's actually destroying the motherboard. There are two main symptoms that I'm seeing. The first one is no touch. The touch function will no longer register. The second is that it doesn't actually charge normally as well. So the charging icon will never actually come up. So we have a pretty good idea that this is caused by the bad USB-C chargers. And we could guess that replacing the charging IC on the logic board could possibly fix this issue as it has done so with older models. But there's already been some experiments with that and people have been running into problems. Wyman over at Gelon Tech is one of the best in the industry and he's been doing great work with this problem already. So I want to give him a shout out. And thanks to Jesse Cruz for pointing me towards his channel when he heard I had this problem. He determined that changing the charging IC alone isn't enough to fix the problem and that there's also an encrypted chip that you have to change along with it. This is really bad from a repair perspective because I have my iPhone 15 Pro that has the problem on it and I need another full donor motherboard in order to fix this problem rather than being able to buy the chip separately. So in this video, I'll be showing you the process to fix your iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max that has no touch and is not charging. And if you have this problem and need help with it, the link is in the description. So I pulled the motherboard out of the housing and I'm gonna place it onto my heating platform to split the interposer. With my board on my heating platform, I have it set to 235. Um, but this heating platform doesn't really get that hot. So I kind of have to supplement with my hot air and um, I'll be doing that once it reaches about like 220 or so. So I'll wait for this to heat up and then um, I'll start to split this. Okay, I think this temperature is upside down for you, but it's at 226 and still rising. As long as it continues to rise, I'll let it go on its own. But if it starts to drop, then I'll supplement with the hot air. 227. I think around 235 it, it should release and allow it to split. There's a lot of ground, a lot of big ground pads that are holding this one together. There it goes, it's going back down to 226 now. So this is where this one starts to struggle at this temperature. It allows for a higher setting, but it has trouble getting there. And this one's just not quite enough to let it split on its own, almost. So I'll go ahead and supplement with hot air from the top and the key is to just keep the hot air moving quickly. It's actually almost ready actually. Okay, let's take a look at the board. So this is the charging IC and this is the chip that has gone bad and this is what needs to be replaced. This is the chip that's paired to it. I was able to determine that after looking at some of the board view softwares. And uh, both of these need to be replaced in order for this one to continue working. This is my donor motherboard and I'll be taking these two chips and transplanting them here. Because the two chips are just paired to each other and not necessarily to the CPU, if I transfer them both, it should allow this board to work again.
Well, I was going for a clean pull so I wouldn't have to reball, but that's not going to happen in this case. So I'm hoping it's as simple as moving these two chips over and nothing strange is going to happen. And uh, I have a jig that I'll be able to test that with as soon as it's done. But yeah, let's move them over. Depending on how well I pull this chip, I may not have to reball it if I get lucky. <clears throat> but if it's anything like that last pull, then uh, I'll have to reball it. I had a little bit too much coffee this morning and I'm kind of shaky. I'm going to try to remove this capacitor first.
So that looks good enough that I should be able to use it without having to reball. You want to be very careful not to damage this chip because it's paired to the other as I've said multiple times and if you damage it you'll need another iPhone motherboard in order to get the chips to fix this one. Let's see if I can get this on there. not exactly straight but it should straighten itself as it sits there it goes there's a little bit of movement that's what I was looking for So I'm going to put this in a jig now and I'm going to see if this is enough to make this work again. This is the first time I've actually tested this solution. So I don't know if I'm going to run into any ex unexpected problems. Okay, before I put this in the jig, I can actually just put it back into the original housing and I can see if it will turn on. I expect it should turn on top board only, but it will probably give me a three minute reboot because the wireless coil connects to the bottom motherboard. And there could also be other reasons besides that, but that's for sure one. Okay, I have the top board connected. It's sitting on top of the bottom board just to have like the proper height, but it's not connected to the bottom board. And uh, I do get an Apple logo. And let's see if the touch screen will be working now. Touch is working, freaking amazing, that's awesome. Also, the phone's fully booting uh, with just top board only. Let's see if it's charging normally. So the phone does fully boot with only top board. It doesn't need to be connected to the bottom board. And it's charging normally. So now we are seeing the percentage signal up here that it's going to be charging. Um, this phone will still give me a three minute reboot because it's not connected to the wireless coil. But touch is working. And as soon as I put this in the jig, I should be able to pull data from it. So that is amazing. The solution works. So the board is in the jig and it does appear to be stable. I don't have the three minute reboot and it's charging normally at, it's at 93% right now. Um, thanks for watching this video. And if you have this problem yourself, remember that the link's in the description. This fixed the no charging and no touch on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Thanks. Bye.